Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed day. Uh, mine is going really good. We've, we've had rain all week long. Hey, you know something I found out that's kind of cool? I, I don't know why this is, but Mr. Brody, my German Shepherd, a lot of you know him. Man, that guy, he hates fireworks. Fourth of July and New Year's Eve, I have to go down to, to the pet store and get him these, uh, these, these gummies that have THC in them and give them to him so he'll go in the closet and curl up because man he just freaks out over fireworks on the 4th of July and New Year's. But listen we've had some horrendous thunderstorms the last couple days and for some reason thunder does not bother that dog at all. He could care less. He was sitting there last night it was lightning and thundering and he was just laying on his side with just sound asleep. Didn't didn't even bother him a bit. Where one firecracker goes off and man, he's just he's ready to die. He thinks he's being attacked. So listen, aside from all that, I want to talk to you for just a minute about God's thoughts toward you. What God actually thinks about you. You know, a lot of times we will listen to those demonic voices in our head, and we all have them. We all have doubts, we all have fears. Those are all demonic voices. But we listen to those demonic voices. You know, there's no way God can love you. You, you screwed up again, the same thing He's delivered you from a hundred times, you did it again? Come on, man, God doesn't love you. You know, we listen to those voices so many times that over time we actually start to believe them. We start to think that there's no way that God could love us as bad as we are. And then psychologists tell us that, that a lot of people you view God the same way you view your earthly father. If your earthly father was strict and mean and just everything else, that's the way we view God. And those of us that even had the best of fathers, they don't compare in comparison to how much God loves us and cares for us. This is what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. People, I love that scripture. That scripture tells me that God wants the absolute best for me. He wants to bring peace to my life, and He's going to bring me to the end of this journey. That's a promise. That's what it says. People, once you are a child of God, once you are a born-again believer, a child of God, a child of light, God puts you in the palm of His hand, and He will never let you go, and no one can grab you out of that hand. You are there for all of eternity, and that is an absolute fact. And anybody that doesn't, doesn't believe that doesn't understand the gospel. This is God's job right here. Isaiah 46, 4. In my Bible, I wrote down right next to that, God's job. It says, and even to your old age, I am He. Even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I made you and I will bear. I will carry and I will deliver you. God says no matter what, once He's got you in His hand, He's going to get you all the way through to the end, no matter what. People, listen. God will do whatever it takes to mold you into a child of God, a child of light. He'll do whatever it takes to mold you into the being that He wants you to be. I don't have my... Oh, right here. Remember that white stone I told you about? One day God's going to walk up and give you a white stone and on that stone your name's going to be on there. And when you see that name you're going to go, that's me, that's why I'm like I am, that's me. People, God is molding you into that being, that name that's on that white stone, that being that He created, He is molding you into that being. Regardless of how much you fight Him. And people, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to me more than I'm talking to you because 
God is molding me and people, I tell you, I am fighting him tooth and nail the whole way. Every lesson God goes to teach me, he's got to teach me about five times before I actually get it. I mean, I've, sometimes I wonder when I, get, <laughs> when I get to heaven, if my name on there is going to be something like hard-headed. Because I mean to tell you, every lesson God teaches me, he's got to teach me several times before I get it. I fight him tooth and nail every step of the way. And I got a feeling that some of you do too. So listen, God's job is Isaiah 46.4. Your job, my job, is Proverbs 3.5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Remember Paul? When Paul lists all the things that he went through as an apostle, all the things he went through, at one point he said, we despaired even of life. And what that means is, is Paul threw up his hands and he said, we're dead. We are absolutely dead. We're not getting out of this one. And I don't know, the Bible doesn't say what happened. Maybe he had like a mob of 200 coming to stone him or, you know, whatever it was, Paul said, we're dead. There's no way we're getting out of this when we're dead. Lord, I hope you have my mansion ready. I'll be there in about five minutes. That was his thought. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, and everything you do, you acknowledge him, God will direct your path, and He will send you down the road that you need to be going down. He will mold you into the being that He created you to be. People, we need to fully grasp, fully grasp how much God absolutely loves you and cares for you and wants the best for you. Never ever listen to those little demonic voices in your head, how you don't measure up. Yeah, I don't. How many times you failed? Yes, so many I can't count. That's all true. But Jesus died for every one of those sins and nailed them to the cross, never to be remembered again. Never to be remembered again. That's how much God loves you. People, the very fact that I'm still alive tells me how much God loves me. The very fact that you're still alive should tell you how much God loves you. Because people, if I was God, I would have snuffed me out a long time ago. And I mean that. This is what it says in 2 Timothy 1.12. For the which cause I suffer all these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul is telling us, look guys, you can count on God. You can count on Him. He's going to get you to the end. He's going to do it. That's how much He loves you. People, in this race that we call life, in this race we call life, you can count on God to bring you to the finish line. He will do it. He started it. He started the race. You didn't start it. He put you at the finish line and He started you down that race. And He started it and He will bring you to the finish line. People, listen to me. Never, ever forget this. God will never, ever, ever give up on you. He will never give up on you. So make sure that you never give up on Him. Never give up on Him. He's got you in His fist. And He'll never let you go and no one will ever take you out of that. People, listen. 2023, it's, it's going to get bad. I mean, we're doing things that are just that are just so stupid right now, like I just saw the other day where they plan on sending 
50 Bradley vehicles to the Ukraine with uh, depleted uranium guns. They're tank killers is what they are. And Vladimir Putin says, I'm not going to allow you to do that. I mean, we, we are poking that Russian bear and something's going to happen. People, this whole world, all the nations are lining up for Ezekiel 38. The Euphrates River is drying up. Just, I mean, all these things are coming about. Everything's happening. It's only going to get worse. But people, we can count on God to bring us to the finish line. He will do it. Anyway, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.